we are recording. Hi, it's John here at uh, MicroAces. Uh, welcome to MicroAces Workshop and to part five of the SE5A build. Um, and uh, true to form, in the last uh, video that I shot uh, for you, a uh, part four of the build, I predicted what we would be doing uh, in this particular uh, build, which was to put the base of the aircraft uh, on that's the bottom of the fuselage and create the undercarriage for it. I've changed my mind. <laughs> and the reason being is that I th well, what I thought we'd do instead is we would actually create the lower wings. This means we can actually put the aircraft on the bench and we can check that we get the correct dihedral. Let's get that little thing out of the way. Uh, we can correct check we get the correct dihedral on both of the wings. If we had it up on the um, uh, on the stilts, um, then it wouldn't be so easy to do that. So I think the the best process we can uh, do is to actually get these wings onto the aircraft and then make sure that each of them is at uh, an equal distance off the uh, off the building board. Um, so uh, so that's good. So that's what we'll do. Um, the uh, um, the attachment of this uh, this lower portion. Uh, this is a slight change from the uh, um, the original uh, the original kit, um, and uh, so we'll go through that in, in some detail. It's actually probably going to be a little simpler, um, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so we'll be putting this lower portion on here, and we'll in the process be covering over this uh, dehedral brace that we've uh, we've created uh, for the uh, for the lower wings um, so the part we need is uh, Z13 let's just flip over to the build board there we go um, so yes we need Z13 and I predicted when designing the uh, the new build, that we would need a little bit of a uh, a fold down onto the wings of these side pieces here, which um, are new to uh, to this particular part. I don't think we're going to need that. I think they're actually going to sit quite neatly. Let's just bring that up they'll sit quite neatly and happily where they are um, because I have uh, well in the design process thought I would be introducing a little bit of a, a downturn in this this part to drop it to, into the wing um, I've added some extra material um, so it doesn't quite fit into that slot so what I'll do is I will trim this slightly um, before uh, before it goes in um, I've also forgotten to um, I'll show you that I've forgotten to actually remove that uh, that slot there that originally um, had the base of the um, the wing brace as it was um, uh, slotting into it so we can actually just completely get rid of that and and an associated sticker that goes with it so uh, just uh, making the whole process a lot easier. So, with this part going here, we have a little bit of sanding to do. Um, we need to create uh, some chamfered edges down there, there and there. And also with this sitting into the wing, we need to create um, some um, uh, some beveled edges here, here, here and here um, so that it sits into the wing quite nicely. So we'll go about doing that. Let's just get rid of the uh, excess lugs um, that are apparent from the sprue. And then I'll just get sanding in. In fact, I'm going to 
use my little edge method here. Let's see if I just get the building board to the edge, get the mat to the edge, and then sound you can see that just in the corner of the shot there. the next oh. hold on I mean, this is all fairly straightforward bevel making which is good which makes the se5 quite a good kit as a uh, first scale kit if you're uh, if you're looking to build scale um, we have previously recommended it as a sort of a beginner's kit but um, it does require certainly for flying it does require um, that you have flown radio control before I feel um, or you just end up busting it beyond a flyable capability so and that's why we created the um, the scrappy so okay um, so that's that's all of the edges there and there we don't need to do it front or back um, and now we just need to create a more shallow chamfer for the uh, for the wings which I'll do just by holding on to it and filing both my nails and the depron at the same time I don't think I've ever had my nails filed. I've always just bit them. <laughs> no. Yeah, so um, the, the scrappy, um, the the sort of, well, it's not really a scale model, but it, it looks like a real aircraft of sorts. Um, that's the one to go for. If you're absolutely at the beginning of the the micro radio control of adventure, adventure. So. Let's just close anything interfering there we go so I had, uh, I had something open on my computer that's pumping messages through <laughs> don't want that disturbing me whilst we're recording this okay so I'm just going to offer it up again so we can see what we're looking at and then get a measure of how much I need to trim so that's good positioning there and there so if I just hold that in place Come on, hold it in place. And if I quickly mark with the knife where I need to take the material away. And what I'll do um, is not on camera, obviously, because it's quite boring, but I'll go and make the adjustment um, on the cut file so that when these do come out to you guys you won't have to do this particular part of the build this will be this mistake will have been rectified for you okay
Right, we'll offer it up one more time. Clear that away. Just to make it all, make sure it all fits in. That's fine. Just going to sand a little of this material away, part of the two mil frame. Just so that this bottom piece sits a little bit deeper into this particular area. My phone's being used for the uh, for, for as a camera for the building board. <sighs> right, come on, glue it, glue it, Porter. Let's get it down. So we'll run our little bead of glue all down these chamfered edges. So, these little ones too. On the chamfers for the wings as well. Okay, just set that aside. And then I'm just going to run a little bit of glue down there. Down the centre there, and across the front format too. I'm also going to apply just the smallest amount of glue to the edges that are going to come in contact with the ones I've already glued on the underside part. And a little bit cross member there, down the sides here. Now I've got a little bit of excess glue there. I'm actually just going to use my finger to get rid of it whilst it's still wet. And probably just smear these away as well, certainly away from the edge, so that we don't get too much of a mess when we bring everything together. So, I'm going to let that set a while, and I'm going to move on. To removing the wings from the sprues so we need the lower wings and those are the ones with the roundels on the bottom Z9 and Z10 so we'll grab those off And 
start trimming. Now you'll notice on the wings, um, if you haven't built um, a, a microitis kit before, um, that there are these white marks um, on the underside of the wing. That actually shows you where, I didn't, I just did that didn't I, put my wing on setting glue. Fortunately it was set enough that it didn't, uh, it didn't transfer or adhere, so uh, whew! <sighs> I hope I'm not the only one that does stupid things like that. Yes, yeah, so these little white areas show you where your ribs attach to, um, generally. So there we have our wings off. Right, well let's just put our wings aside and we'll uh, come back to uh, attaching the underside. So. We know our part fits, so we'll just start at one end, fitting it correctly in position. And then the rest should follow. Bringing those sides and bottom together. So they attach with this little of the internal material showing. And then onto the nose. Bring all that together. And those chamfered edges really enable you to hide any of the edge material. It works really well if you get a good chamfer. And because the glue is so tacky now, once they are stuck, and of course we glued both sides, They stick like glue. So we do have a little bit of uh, excess material, or excess glue, I should say. Um, and I'm just using friction, really, to just remove it. It's fine. Just gently beading it up, and off it comes. Yeah, the other thing I noticed actually when I was uh, thinking about what the next step should be is that these um, bits of the uh, the wing are quite vulnerable and uh, the quicker we can get our wing on the uh, less chance there is of bending or snapping one of them. Not that it couldn't be glued back on but it's um, you just don't want to do it in the first place. So let's just press these wings lower lower part of the wing into place there we go they seem to sit rather nicely there that's really good i love that i thought it was going to be a, a little more complex than that but nope it's all worked out rather well so I think the, uh, the undercarriage is going to sit there quite nicely. We shall see. Just 
rubbing off another bit of uh, excess. I don't know whether that glues from this process or previous. So now I'm just going to use the uh, handle of the knife to really start sculpting these edges. I'm almost rounding them off slightly. Um, and the Depron doesn't mind it at all. And it does look rather good after you've done it on closer inspection. So, just sort of pressing down at a 45 degree angle to the, uh, and varying that angle as well, but sort of 45 degrees and, and either side of that. And that the, the seam almost disappears. It's really nice. Really nice. Brilliant. So there's quite a few sort of graphic details on the uh, on the bottom there, which um, certainly can be picked out uh, during during flight, which uh, which is nice. It's always nice to see the uh, see the little details when it's flying around. Great. Okay. So we'll pop that to one side and we will continue with the wings. So we've got the ribs already installed um, for the uh, for the inner part of the uh, of the, the wing itself. Um, so all we need now are the ribs for the outer portion of the uh, of the wing. So we've got uh, one set of ribs left here within this square. Let's just remove that. Okay, let's trim these up and this time they are going to be uh, as single ribs rather than duplicates or two together as we did with the uh, the inner ribs so we'll just divide these completely and again there we go and each one of these gets a sticker wrap. There we go. And on this one, they actually um, they go across the roundels. So it's S8 and S9 that are required. Now, quite often in the initial uh, artwork prototyping, I get these slightly out, so there may be some adjustment required, um, but we shall see. So, center up, turn over, Let's see where we get to. That's about it. Right. So let's just fold these stickers down onto either side of the foam rib. One done. 
Let's just slice off that excess foam. Get a new need for a new blade. Good, right. I don't like bits on my billboard. Second, second rib. There we go. Right, so obviously these attach onto there and there. Oh, it seems to have, not too bad. Seems to have line up. Fairly well with the uh, with the grow. Oh, you can't see it because my fat fingers are in the way. <laughs> we'll have a look at that later. Um, but before we uh, attach those to the wings, we just need to make sure we've got a good fold in the wing. Don't be too afraid to uh, to fold these over. This is quite tough material, and the uh, the print itself forms a a film too, which. Uh, which adds a little bit of strength to the uh, to the whole thing. So which rib goes where? So it's that one goes. That one goes on that one. Let's just check. That one goes there. Yes. There's just a slight slope to the the roundel, the red roundel, um, which suggests it's on the uh, the right side of the graphic itself. Um, so yeah, that goes that goes on there. Let's glue. So when you attach these, you've got you've got a slot here as well, and you want to be right at the edge of that slot because through there the um, the struts actually attach to the rib to give them uh, an anchor to the uh, to the lower wing. So. Obviously, you need the slot open so you can get the uh, get the struts through, or the lower the lower part of the strut through. Um, but you want it absolutely flush, if you can, with the side of that sticker. I'm just holding it up to the light there. Not that you can see that, but um, that seems to do the trick. Yeah, as you can see, the, the graphic is actually quite nicely lined up as, as well as it can be for something that's actually protruding from the bottom of the uh, of the wing. Um, and I mean, the reason that we that the, the wings are as they are, firstly, um, it's a lot easier for us to to, uh, to manufacture um, the sort of equipment we would need to mold these into a, a curved shape um, is certainly beyond our means um, 
and uh, the other thing is that it means that it's a nice thin wing which at this scale is is really important the uh, the, the drag um, created by the leading edge and the, the disturbance created by the leading edge of the wing is so important at uh, at small scales the the uh, the thinner the wing you can get the the, the better the airflow and obviously the uh, the um, more beneficial the the lift is uh, that's generated from from that wing and that's what it's all about especially when when you're designing aircraft that um, that flew slowly compared to uh, modern day uh, modern day aircraft especially military aircraft um, You know, if I was designing an F-15, it wouldn't be so much of an issue. Um, but that's not my thing. I've just noticed on this one, I've forgotten to, you can see clearly, I've forgotten to remove the uh, extra foam that was coming out of the bottom. But that's all right. I'll just remove that for now whilst the glue is drying. And then, this is no good for your knife because it gets glue on it, but... Uh, and chop that off. And then we can always clean the glue off the blade, but I actually I might change the blade anyhow. Good. There we go. That one also sitting alongside the slot. Okay, that all looks absolutely great. Um, so now let us attach those wings onto the aircraft. So we'll do a, a dry test fit first. As you see, the uh, carbon fiber strip goes straight up the crease in the uh, in the wing itself um, and then that sets our dihedral for the uh, for the wing no, no. Look, at that. look at me shake and my mum wanted me to become a surgeon <laughs> that wouldn't have ended well <sighs> right so that's going to go on okay I'm sure this will too. Right, let's get some glue on the subject. And as you can see, there's a little white graphic there just showing you where that, that rib is going to join the wing. So we've got a little indicator of where we can actually apply the glue, but we're gonna we're gonna go all the way along as well. We're gonna go get the glue where the rib is. And then we're going to get some on the edge as well. The reason that we've made this change uh, using this method of dihedral brace is that the SE5A was, the old kit was prone to um, wing sack if you didn't use a really decent amount of glue to, uh, to hold it in place. Oh, saying that. We'll also run um, a little glue up that carbon fibre 
There we go. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, there was a a bit of uh, a bit of wing sag that, that occurred. If um, if it didn't receive enough glue, um, and possibly more than it you should expect uh, to apply to something as small and lightweight as as a micro aces model um so when it came to a revision we thought we'd do that it would you know obviously there are a lot of people out there who do have and micro aces se 5 as that fly absolutely fine and 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 have plenty of uh dihedral in the uh, in the wings but uh, for some it would it would sag and uh and that meant sort of completely taking the plane apart, and, uh, certainly the wings apart, and uh, and then re-rigging and and all that stuff. So it was a bit of a pain. So anything we could do that uh, would resolve that. At the time of designing the SE five A, which was I think it was the second kit of this type that I designed, um, and it was the first to have this sort of flat. Um, central area and then uh, dihedral coming from two points on the wing um, and uh, I mean the, the, we we used a brace so you put the wing together and then you just sit it in the uh, in the wing brace until the glue had set but um, the yuhu if it's um, if it's moved or moves during uh, its curing process, it tends to be a lot weaker um, than if it's just, you know, it's left in a uh, one position. So it's very easy to uh, to get a weak joint um, where you don't want one. Okay, that's the uh, starboard wing done. And now on to the port wing. So, once again, glue in all the areas. If you saw the last video, you'd know that uh, I accidentally put glue on the uh, on the wrong side of the one of these ribs um, that sits at the base of the wing. Um, so that's why I didn't apply glue on this side because there was already glue, even though it's been a, an hour or so since it's been there it's, and dried off. It's it still does its job. Um, once again, I've forgotten to put some onto the carbon fibre. Okay. So, I'm just going to bring those together. And then I'm going to take it apart um, and let it set. Uh, then we're going to get a really nice bond. So let's just leave that there. Um, and then, actually, whilst that's setting, I can show you this is another new part because of that carbon fibre strip on the other side of the wing. We've got some nice little sticker covers to hide it once it's in place so it's just i'm just trying to match up 
the rib. Well, the rib, since it's going to be easier if I use my tweezers. My fat fingers aren't going to be getting in the way. So. One carbon fiber part masked off, although there is a little area down here you may notice that isn't. What I've done is I've matched up the graphics on the on the ribs, so that tells me that I just need to make a little adjustment to the um, uh, to the cut file uh, for this particular sticker. I could actually make it slightly shorter as well, um, but I can make some changes to the cut file so that that actually that sticker goes right to that rib and covers that last little bit of carbon fiber down there. Super, right, let's get this, uh, this other wing on. So now I can check the dihedral on the aircraft. In fact, probably what I'm going to do is just use a couple of sanding sticks just to, well, I was going to say hold that in place, but that's probably a little bit too much. Uh, actually, maybe not. Let's just put one under there. There we go. So, what's that? <laughs> Great. So, now I'm going to leave that like that. Um, to uh, to actually set uh, and I'm going to leave it for a few hours um, just so that I can be sure that the um, the glue has uh, has properly dried um, so it's probably a good place to leave it because um, I could get on with other things but it's on my billboard um, it's time for tea I'm dying for a cuppa um, and, uh, so it's probably best we leave it there um, let's just uh, so yeah, so we've got the wing, the lower wings on. Um, the next stage will definitely be uh, getting the undercarriage made, um, and then we've got other things to move on from there. So um, many thanks for watching, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the uh, the next episode. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.